The ability to synchronize behaviors is a common property seen in self-organizing systems in nature. Some examples are fireflies, which in some species are able to synchronize their flashes, or crickets, which in some species are able to synchronize their chirping. Cicadas, a kind of insect, has a synchronized development and emergence from their larval states in, in certain periods which are uh, prime numbers of years. Neurons in the brain are able to synchronize their firing. Heart cells synchronize their beating. All of these seem to have some adaptive significance and have been enabled via natural selection. In this subunit, we're going to look at one example, the example of fireflies flashing. So if you're lucky, you've seen at some point this phenomenon of synchronized firefly flashing. I'm going to show you this little video. So the little points of light are individual fireflies. And you can see very quickly, many of them start to flash in unison. And this synchronized flash gets even stronger as more of the fireflies are recruited to flash in unison. It seems to be about one flash per second. It's very, very striking. So similar to our discussion of flocking and schooling, we can ask why do these kinds of systems synchronize? Well, at least in the case of the fireflies, there seems to be an explanation in terms of mating. Again, there's multiple hypotheses. One hypothesis is that the synchronized flashing makes the male's location more visible to the females, so the females can come and find the males. It also makes small groups of males appear larger, and perhaps that means they're more attractive to females. It reduces noise. That is, males can more easily spot females in the dark between the flashes rather than having to find them all while everyone is flashing chaotically. So these are all hypotheses. Perhaps all of them are correct, perhaps some of them. Nobody really knows for sure yet, but it does seem to be an adaptive trait. Then there's the question of how to synchronize. So the assumption is that there's no leader leading the synchronization. Each individual firefly only sees its neighbors flashing. Now what has been discovered is that each firefly itself is a natural oscillator. That is, it has a natural flashing frequency of about one second. That occurs because of brain activity. Excitation builds up in its neurons, reaching some threshold, which leads to a flash. So there's a natural timing for this. However, if the firefly sees its neighbor flashing, then this either resets its cycle, that is, its excitation is set to zero, or speeds up its cycle, perhaps depending on the species. But the result, people have shown, of a group of these oscillators that interact is synchrony of the kind that we just saw. And this is called synchrony via coupled oscillators. So, similar to the flocking example, here we have a very simple mechanism that produces decentralized synchronization, and we can model it pretty easily using NetLogo. So let's look at a model. We're going to look at the NetLogo Fireflies model, which is in the biology section of the models library. And what happens in that model, we'll look at it in a second, we're going to have a number of fireflies. Each one is a natural oscillator. It has its own clock where after a number of ticks, it's going to flash. Let's say the cycle length is 10. Whenever the clock reads zero, the firefly flashes. And then after it flashes, it counts up to nine, and then it hits zero again and flashes. So every time it reaches the maximum, it resets the clock to zero and then flashes. All the fireflies in the model have the same cycle length, but each of them, once you do setup, is going to begin at some random point in their cycle. So they're not going to begin at zero, they're going to begin at some random point. So let's take a look at that. So I've opened NetLogo. I'm going to go to the models library. 
go to biology, go to fireflies, and I open it up. So to illustrate how this works, let's start with just one firefly. So the thing to look at now is how many fireflies we have and the cycle length. It's set to 10 ticks. So we do set up. Here's our firefly right down here, this little gray uh, triangle. And let's do, let's slow it down a little bit and do go. And what you're going to see is it moving around. You see the world wraps around at the edges and every 10 ticks it flashes. So there's nobody else for it to interact with so it's just going to go along flashing at that, in that same cycle. Okay, I'm going to stop it. Now let's uh, uh, start with two fireflies. So here I start, here's one way over here, you can't really see it. And this one, note that they start at different points in their cycle. This one by uh, random chance started at the flashing point in its cycle. This one started at a different point. So now when I do go, you can see them flashing but at different times. And similarly, if I start with, let's say, well, we'll do 45, you're going to see different ones flashing at different times. Okay, so let's look at how they interact. When a firefly perceives uh, another firefly or one or more fireflies flashing near them, and they look within a radius of one patch, so they can only see one patch uh, around them, they're going to use this information to reset their own clocks. So here's how that works. Each firefly has a parameter called flash length, which is how many ticks of each flash. In, in the uh, version we looked at just a second ago, it was one tick per flash. So you can think of it as one tick for now, we can reset it. They also have a parameter called flashes to reset, which gives the number of other fireflies they need to see flashing in order to change their clock. So they have to look one patch around them and they count, at each time step, they count the number of other fireflies they see that are flashing. And they can use one of two rules. The first one is called phase delay. And that's here's how that works. So if I'm a firefly, if I saw enough flashes in my vision radius, that is, uh, if you go back, flashes to reset gives that number, how many flashes I have to see in my vision radius in order to change my clock. If I do see enough, I'm going to reset my clock to flash length. So if flash length is one tick, I'm going to reset my clock to one. Everybody flashes on zero in their clock. So when, when my clock says zero, I flash. So if I reset my clock to one, that means that I've actually gone backwards in some sense from wherever I used to be back to just after I would have flashed. And so what that does is it synchronizes me with the flashes I just saw. Because everybody else who I saw who was flashing had just flashed, so their clocks are all at one or two if flash length is two and so on. So it synchronizes me with the other fireflies that I saw in my neighborhood. So that's called a de delay because it really effectively sets my clock back to be in sync with the ones I saw. There's another possible rule called phase advance which is if I saw enough flashes in my vision radius, I then reset my clock to zero. So I'm sort of advancing my clock and I flash immediately. So we can experiment with those two rules. But let's look at uh, what the behavior looks like. So notice that the strategy here is set to delay. The flashes to reset, that's the number I need to see in my neighborhood in order to reset my clock is one, so I just need to see one. 
the flash length is one tick, the cycle length is ten ticks. Okay, Sh uh, show dark fireflies just shows the gray ones, the ones who aren't flashing. If I turn that off, those ones uh, disappear. I won't do that for now. So now I'm going to set the number up to, let's say, uh, seven, around seven, a little over 700. Okay, so set up. Now there's a lot of them. And go. And let's speed this up a little bit. On this plot, you can see at each time step how many are flashing. That's what this gives. So they're all interacting with each other. And you'll start to see this number increasing here, which means that more and more of them are getting into synchronization. And it's growing quickly. It's going down a little bit. The randomness comes from the fact that they're moving around at random, so they interact in a random way. But they're definitely uh, getting more and more in sync for their flashes. And I think we can see that better if I slow it down a little bit. So now you can see a really synchronized flashing. So this delay strategy seems to work. Alright, let's stop. So now you can see that there's a relatively simple set of rules that each firefly obeys. Each firefly only interacts with nearest neighbors here, one patch away, and yet we can get the whole group in almost perfect synchrony. If I went longer it would even be better. We would get to perfect synchrony without any individual firefly having any global knowledge of what's going on. So let's do a little quiz where you play with this model yourself.